Today I want to talk about self-confidence and three things you can do immediately to feel more self-confident because the truth is when we feel confident, we are healthier, we're happier, we have a better outlook, we have a better mood, and the truth is we get to impact other people in a much better way, right? And before we get into it, we also need to understand what is self-confidence really, right? My definition of self-confidence is simply being comfortable in who you are and being okay in who you are and respecting all of your strengths and all of your weaknesses and not judging them and simply realizing this is who I am, this is how I am, and yes, as a human being, I constantly seek and strive to grow and to learn and expand and at the same time not judge my flaws and my weaknesses and those things that perhaps may be, may be perceived as imperfect in this, in this human world, right? And I believe that a confident person also has the ability to make other people around them comfortable. A confident person uplifts people around them to the best of their ability, empowers the people around them, sees the good in other people, um, while also not judging the what we call the bad, right? And the other thing that I think is important as far as self-confidence is concerned, that there's sort of like a little bit of that bulletproofness, meaning that we are less prone to feeling um, triggered by other people or feeling like we're being judged. In other words, yes, we hear the criticism, we hear the judgment, we notice the um, blame, shame, and things like that, but we have the ability to not take it so personally and instead consider it as it's feedback. And we get to decide how much of that we want to take in and how much of that we're like, well, thanks for the feedback, but I happen to not agree because the truth is everybody has an opinion. <laughs> everybody has something to say about something. And a confident person has the ability to discern what of that applies to me? What about that do I want to believe? What about that is useful for me? And how much of that can I let go? So that's just my definition of, uh, just a raw definition of self-confidence. And a person who's confident also generally has a bit more inner peace. They live in a sense of acceptance. Like this is, I'm, I'm willing to accept it, and now I'm going to make the best of it. Right? And very often, you know, as humans, we have the tendency to, you know, carry with us a lot of baggage from the past, to hold on to guilt, to anger, you know, sadness, shame from the past. And that's not useful because very often that will weigh us down. It will keep us stuck in the past, which means then it takes away the potential from the present moment which then sometimes we can use for the future. On the other hand, anxiety is another thing that can take away self-confidence, can take away the power of the present moment because anxiety can, can cause us to fixate into the future. What if this and what if that? And then we catastrophize the future and we live in you know, this doom and gloom, that thing that will never happen because I know scientists have proven by now that 85% of what we mm, catastrophize about the future actually never happens. So what's the point, right? Instead, I prefer to fascinate myself and fantasize about a future that I do want to experience, which again, in the flip side, on the other end, gives me more comfort, gives me more inner peace because either way, who's right, who's wrong, we don't know. But I think the latter just personally gives me a bit more comfort and gives me more confidence to keep going and stay in this present moment. So here are the three steps I'd like to share with you. And they all really have to do with past, present, and future. 
Um, and keep in mind, here's a little secret that I want to share with you that I quite frankly found quite mind-blowing in the best way possible. As you can probably imagine, as a hypnotherapist, my job, my mission is to help people overcome some of the most debilitating things like anxiety, depression, fears, phobias, unwanted behaviors, habits, things like that. And very often these people will have already tried so many things that didn't work. And our job, of course, is to understand what is causing this problem, this dis-ease, this behavior. And very often when we get to the cause, what I find so mind-blowing is the cause of a lot of these problems that we have in our life, whether it be procrastination, self-sabotage, self-hate, um, you know, addiction, and all these, even anxiety, depression, at the root, believe it or not, is actually the idea of, I am not enough. I am not worthy. I don't deserve. I am somehow broken. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. And a belief like that can be the seed. Because when we believe that about ourselves, it can literally germinate into something that is so destructive in nature as anxiety and depression can be. And so very often on the other side then when we dissolve that with that belief and we show a person do you really do you see that you not being enough is completely not true and delusional and not even appropriate but so often if that belief is at the very core of who we are, it can cause so much damage. And this is why I'd like for you to, to you know, give you that perspective of past, present, future on how you can reestablish self-confidence within yourself, which really translates into self-validation, self-love, self-worth, and a powerful self-esteem. Make sense? So, number one, in regard to the past. And this is just very big strokes, very big picture. But if you were to look at your past from a non-judgmental way, from a very open-minded, detached way, where you can just sit back here, look back at your past from a very detached perspective, look back and notice and become aware. And by the way, you don't have to become aware of every single one of these moments, but just big, stro big strokes, big picture. If you can see all the challenges, all the problems, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the tests, all the difficulties that you have been through, gone through, you got to the other side of it. Whatever it took, maybe it took muscle, maybe it took wisdom, maybe it took resilience, maybe it took perseverance, maybe it took courage, maybe it took compassion. I don't know what it took, but you do because you have now become aware of what you have been through. And the reason you don't have the self-confidence that you want is because when was the last time you sincerely appreciated yourself for going through all of that like a hero? When was the last time that you thanked yourself? That you celebrated yourself, that you appreciated and validated yourself. And by the way, let's not judge the execution because it's very often easy to say in hindsight, oh, I should have done better. I could have done better. I should have done more. I should have done shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? As Tony Robbins says, should all over yourself. How useful is that? And rather coming from a place of judgment, come from a place of appreciation and say, wow, hats off to you, even though you didn't have the tools, you didn't have the skills, you didn't have the support, maybe you did it all by yourself and you did the best you could with what you had. And imagine if you could right now 
give yourself, even if nobody else saw it, if nobody else was there, if nobody else could possibly understand what you have been through, because you are the only person who can possibly understand what it was like to be in your shoes. And even if you were to try to write a book about it and try to use words about it and try to write a story about it, nobody can possibly understand the emotions it took, the grit, the mental resilience, the physicality it took. And imagine if you could now appreciate and thank yourself. Notice what that will make you feel. Now, what just happened to your self-confidence? Chances are, and I'm just using a metaphor here, right? But chances are it might have felt like you just received a warm blanket, a, a sense of, you know, here is something that you can wrap yourself into, that you can always find comfort in, that you can always feel the warmth about. And you can keep this blanket with you wherever you go. It can, of course, be this invisible blanket, but this blanket is a, a visual representation of how far you have come and what you have endured and what you have been through and the appreciation of it and who you have become because and despite. And so how do you feel now about your self-confidence and who you are as a person? Has this already helped you change a little bit of the perspective of who you are as a person and hopefully taken out a little bit or maybe a lot of it, that judgment, that criticism, that blame, those expectations that you may have had of yourself that have now softened a bit. So that's number one. Number two, present. This is something we do a lot, I think. I used to do this a lot. Comparing ourselves to other people, thinking and feeling that they are so much further ahead. They are so much better than us. They are so much smarter than us. They are so much more evolved. They are so much luckier. They are so much richer in every way, education, money, status, whatever, right? And often, feeling inferior, feeling, oh, I'm not as good as such, and oh, you know, people judge me, and, you know, they look at me a certain way, and, you know, it's, it's my fault. So often, that comparing will cause us then, of course, to feel and shrivel up into a ball, and then we feel less than, and that's not useful. Because is it actually fair? First of all, is it fair? For us to compare ourselves to anybody, did anybody, even if you had the same parents, by the way, did anybody really have the same exact, exact, exact life experience that you did, even if you were in the same household? Because I can assure you, four different siblings have had four different set of parents. And so therefore, number one, it is not fair to compare yourself. It just is not realistic and it, it isn't useful. And instead of comparing ourselves to other people, here's something that you can do that is actually incredibly useful. And this is a law, this is a natural law. It's called perception is projection. And that means if you see something in another person that you admire, that you edify, that you maybe worship, that you look up to, that you're like, oh my God, I wish I was like them. I wish I could be as confident. I wish I could be as this and that. Well, guess what? The fact that you can recognize it in another human being means it's also inside of you. That could mean maybe that quality has not yet been completely developed inside of you yet, which means it's an opportunity for you to, to grow that. And that's, of course, up to you. But ultimately, it means you already are that also. Otherwise, you couldn't recognize it. That is perception. It's like a mirror. The simple way to say that is everything is a mirror. 
and everything that you see outside of you is also inside of you, as the Bible says. That which is, is above is below, that which is below is above. And so, how do you feel about your con? And yes, of course, the opposite is also true. For example, if you are judging something in somebody, oh, they should do better, and how could they be so cruel, and how could they be so mean, and that person should control their temper, and you know, what's wrong with that? Well, that also indicates that there is something inside of us that maybe we should start to pay attention to that needs a little bit of cleaning up, so to speak, or a little bit of paying attention to and clearing and releasing and cleansing possibly, right? An emotional detox might be useful because if we are triggered by somebody else's, oh, there's a little spider, oh my goodness, a white Wow, beautiful, little white spider, okay? So now I'm distracted. <laughs> um, let's just take a step back. So, yeah, so everything that we are being either seduced by on the outside or triggered by is always an invitation to look inside and say, okay, what about me? Can I appreciate about that? And what about me? Can I dissolve or release or cleanse? And instead of comparing yourself, notice how maybe there's a different relationship to that now, right? Because at the end of the day, we, and this to me is such a, um, brings me to so much gratitude because at the end of the day, we all get to learn from each other and I think that's a beautiful thing. And number three is about the future. And this is my favorite. This is where you can, and this is easiest with eyes closed. If you were to close your eyes and if you could see yourself as the best version of you, the highest version of you, the optimal, the epitome version of you, the way you like it, the way you want it, based on your conditions, your standards, your definitions of success, your expectations. If you could see yourself as the best version of you, notice what comes to mind. Notice what do you look like? What do you sound like? How do you move? What do you own? What do you do? What do you have? How do you um, see life differently? What are your uh, thoughts? What are your feelings? What do you get to enjoy? What do you get to experience? And you now get to have a conversation with this ideal version of you. And again, this is really easiest with eyes closed because it gives you a deeper, richer, better, more profound experience. And when you can have a conversation with that highest, higher, best version of you, optimal version, how we like to, again, no judgment, right? And you can now ask this version of you one question. You can ask that now in the privacy of your mind and notice what comes back. And maybe the question is, this is one of my favorites, is what is the smallest thing I can do right now that will give me the biggest impact so that I can actually embody and become this best version of me? And immediately you will receive an answer. You're welcome. It really is that easy. And now, as we close, and I probably should have asked you this earlier, let me ask you now, because you probably know this. If I would have asked you at, at the beginning of our time together, on a scale of 1 to 10, and where if you wanted to rate your self-confidence, where 10 is like, I am the, you know what, I am, I'm like the all, right? 10 is like level 10 confidence. And one is like, oh my God, like I'm not even like self, how do you even spell that? Like how do you even, I, what is that? A scent? Is that like, what is that even? 
which was me, by the way, and this is why it's so familiar to me. On a scale of 1 to 10, where were you before we had this conversation? If you could just rate it. And where are you now in regard to your self-confidence? How do you feel now about your self-worth as a person, your value, your self-esteem, your self-love and self-appreciation? And hopefully, we, you know, climbed a couple of ranks here, right? Because it's not easy, but it's doable. And of course, you can do it. And I'm going to now look for my spider. <laughs> uh, the symbols of spiders, what do they represent? I have to do some um, deep diving into that because, as you know, everything in life is about symbolism. And we must interpret what does that symbol mean to us. So I'm going to do some some digging, investigating. I'll let you know what I come up with. So hopefully this served you, and I'll see you soon. Much love.